Hey, I'm Jamie Rowe. I'm Tony Palacios. I'm David Bach. I'm Carl Ney. Welcome to our latest Guardian mockumentary, if you will. We've got a few new videos to show you, some, uh, some interviews, some behind the scenes footage, and hopefully we'll have a good time. So come along with us. Uh, Guardian actually started back in 1982, so we've been around for quite a while. I'm the only original member left, the last of the Mohicans, if you will. And uh, in the early days, we, we were kind of young, naive Christians. We wanted to form a rock band and tell people about Jesus. And we wore this wild space armor. We called ourselves Fusion. We were like uh, Luke Skywalker meets Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> by a fluke of nature, actually by God's hand, we were signed uh, with Enigma Records in 1985. One night, this car pulls up. And this tall, uh, good-looking, Latin-looking gentleman gets out of his car. Geek. <laughs> oh, he gets out of the car. We're going, who's this guy? And uh, why, don't you, why don't you tell him a little bit about that? So I'm sitting there listening to demo tapes. I'm like, wow, this is kind of trippy stuff. It was hilarious because uh, the drummer, I guess, like Dave said, was really kind of frustrated with the other guitar player. and so. He had it all set up, man. He was telling me how cool it was. I actually met with him one time before uh, I actually came down with you guys. Unbeknownst to us, Tony Palacios had come down to audition to our band. <laughs> he set up this audition, I pull up, and I'm pulling my gear out. And I go in, and Dave and the other singer, the old singer, and we're looking at me like, what's going on? Who is this guy? I'm thinking, well, these guys aren't very nice now, are they? We came all the way to audition. <laughs> and uh, so I ended up auditioning, and. Uh, actually didn't get in the band then. That was a couple months before I even well, before I We had no idea that he was to audition. We knew he was a great player, but it just took us by such surprise. But it turned out that Tony ended up joining our band. He was either 85 or 86. He really felt, as strange as it may seem, that God had called him to this band. We did make our, our record with Oz Fox on Enigma Records. And at that time, we thought, OK, this is it. We've hit the big time. We go in the studio with a uh, the guitar player from Striper who was selling millions of records. We make this record. Our record company is behind us. We're on Enigma Capital. We're set to tour the world. We headed off on our first U.S. tour, which was up in the, the Northwest area. Yeah. Driving all night, couldn't wait to get there. Our booking agent was waiting for us up there, said he had great accommodations for us. This was a house that was owned by a drug dealer that was recently <laughs> seized, and it's been boarded up. The weeds were high enough that we could shower in privacy, but we each took our first cold water shower, and that was our first indoctrination to road life. We played everywhere and anywhere. Uh, being on a mainstream label, we played bars, clubs, uh, auditoriums, some churches, basically anywhere that we could. I remember when I first moved to LA in, in 86, I went to a place called the uh, Guitar Center. And I saw this flyer on the wall and it said, put on the full armor of God. And guess who it was? These guys with their full armor of God sitting Space up there. Space It says Guardian and, and this know. whole thing, man. And I just went to my friend and I said, Look at this, man. This is ridiculous. Carl hadn't played drums for quite a few two months. Years. Two, oh, years. Oh, two, two years. Two years. And yeah. Tony was a little concerned. So Carl... I'll tell you how I was concerned. <laughs> I wasn't going to waste my time with a guy who hadn't played drums in two years. We were all kind of sitting in there uh, praying, getting ready to, to rehearse stuff. And Carl walks in the door, and God, I just distinctly remember God just said, There's your man. And as we come up uh, on the rehearsal space, you know, we kind of turn the corner, and I hear, Doom, 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 doom. I mean, really, <laughs> really, really bad. bad drum, and I'm like, listen to that guy, he stinks. <laughs> Gosh, and he's, I said, I, I really felt God say this was the guy, listen to him play. So I turned the door and look in, and uh, it was our singer at the time on the drum going. <laughs> <laughs> much to Tony's relief. Oh, yeah, much to my relief. Out. And then Carl got on and steady ho, baby. And then, oh, Tony was friends with John Dino Elefante, and just as a casual conversation, they said, well, guys, we're forming a label. Um, you know, would you like to make a record w with us? We go, well, we don't even have a singer. And they go, well, you know what? Let's, let's just kind of wing it. And at that point, the great singer hunt began. Yeah. And as it turned yeah. out. Real quick, before we go any further here, <laughs> you got to understand, I, I lived in Indiana at the time. And I see, <laughs> all I see is like Guardian, you know, and Stripers involved there and stuff, you know, and they got a, they got a major deal going here. They're from LA. I thought, these guys are flipping rock stars, man. I mean, driving around in limos and everything, you know. 
everything. So that's the impression I have of the boys here. Mm. So we popped in this tape, and we have this thing that Tony and I call the chill factor. He started to sing, and it was basically just him a cappella. John and Dino, in their faith, had already had us start recording this record, which was a later called Fire and Love, without a singer. So here it was. We had cut basic tracks, and when we decided it was going to be Jamie, Jamie flew out, basically got off the plane, went straight into the studio. Fire and Love was also a landmark for us in that we got to make our first music video, um, the song, uh, which was the very first song on the record, uh, Power of Love. We got to make that in an old electric cable factory. We set up Carl's drums on some way up on some big, big old spools, spools of cables, and that was our first video. And interestingly enough, that one was actually shown on MTV because at that time, Epic had picked up our record. And that was the very first bona fide Guardian video, Power of Love, and you're going to see it right now. Here it is. Can you feel the power?
see David, uh, kind of an organized fellow, um, behind the computer all the time. He's really into that whole uh, Macintosh thing, and, and uh, really kind of like the the founding member of the band and, and the, the hard driver. You know, he's a founding member of this this band and everything, and uh, he's got great business sense. Um, he's responsible for a lot of our business dealings. Um, I think he's a great. I think he's a monster bass player. I think he underrates himself sometimes. I think. Uh, I think he's one of the best rock and roll bassists you can find. David brings, I think, vision, a lot of vision to the band as far as our direction in, in what we call our business of Guardian. Living with there David, long suffering. <laughs> that would be mine. <laughs> one night we were playing Gazzari's and we went to, down to our favorite barbecue place and we're walking back and we walk past this a jewelry store and there's this big limo out in front and we're all walking by. We kind of ignore it because it's Hollywood. Tony goes, Dave, Dave, look, look. And there was this unmistakable profile in there. He goes, dude, it's James Brown. I go, no, it can't be. He goes, dude, that is James Brown. No one has hair like that and wears those kind of suits. And he had these big old bodyguards. So our, our old drummer came back at that time. This was just before Carl joined. And he's going, what's up? I go, dude, that's James Brown. And our drummer goes, who's James Brown? <laughs> he goes, you guys like him? I'll go in and talk to him. We're going, no, 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 no man, no. don't go in. You know, he's, he's got these bodyguards and stuff. And our drummer goes in and goes, uh, hello, Mr. Brown. I don't know who you are, but my friends out here are really big fans. And they're wondering if they could take a picture with you. And I'm thinking, OK, his bodyguards are going to come out and beat Kill us, us up and, and crush us. <laughs> and you know what? James, James came out. And we asked him, oh, can we take a picture? And what did James do? I'll never forget, man. It was just, it was regal. He says, Cole. <laughs> and his bodyguard, this big six foot seven guy, whips out a comb and James <laughs> combs his hair. And you know what? And he got in the uh, middle of us, shook all our hands, took a picture. I mean, here we were, these little, oh, these little punky rock kids bugging him, you know. And he was so gracious and so he, you know, he took a picture and said. Uh, you know, well, congratulations, guys. And it was funny because our drummer said, you know, James, we're a Christian band. And this is right after James was having a lot of li legal problems. We're a Christian band, and we believe in no drugs and all that. And I'll never forget James. He put his hand on our drummer's shoulder and says, young man, I commend you. I commend you, young man. Go forth. <laughs> so with, with, with uh, James's blessing at that point, we knew that the sky was the limit. Our very next record, after a two-year non-stop blitz of touring was an album called Miracle Mile. We had decided we wanted to make kind of a pseudo-concept record based around kind of like an old traveling medicine show. And when we finally convinced our record company that it could work and could happen, we went into the studio and made that one. And uh, that song had a bunch of interesting story songs in that there were, there were a lot of songs about people and characters and that kind of thing. And so when it came time to do the video, we picked a very interesting song. This is our video from Miracle Mile. This is Shoeshine Johnny, and here it is. Just do 
Tony Palacios, the, the guitar hero of Guardian. Tony and I have been together the longest in the band. We're practically like brothers. Um, we fight like brothers. In fact, a lot of times, Jamie and Carl will, will get out of our way. We'll have these radical musical disagreements, and then we just shake it off like brothers would do. Um, Tony is really, uh, he's probably one of my best friends. He and I have been through a lot together, you know, uh, personal with our families and stuff. His dad was my pastor. He's, he was my first friend in Guardian. He, uh, he was the reason I joined the band, because I knew him. And uh, I think he's a talented musician and stuff like that. I think he's a great performer. Uh, I admire his ministry skills. Uh, he seems to be the mouthpiece of the band as far as like our uh, onstage ministry a lot of times. Tony, first of all, brings a, uh, a really strong background of uh, biblical knowledge, which is really cool. And not to, to downplay the other guys in our band, but he's went to Bible college, so he's, quote, our Bible scholar. Oh, is it my turn? Yes. Huh? If I had to sum my husband up in one word, I'd say intense. <laughs> we wanted to do a video um, that was just really wild and, and just tons of characters and just kind of a big, you know, just a really big production. So, man, we had people running and out, senior citizens. That was one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> one Midgets, of my llamas. <laughs> was it uh, llama? Was Chihuahua. Emu. Emu. Chihuahua. The thing, though, uh, what I was going to say is that uh, the senior citizens, man, that, just that it was late in the day. They've been hanging around for a long time. And so that all these uh, elderly people came and, you know, we're, you know, blasting the, the playback <laughs> full volume. Yeah. And they're sitting around trying to act like this is this is fun. And man, so a couple <laughs> they were, cool, of the, though, they were really cool, but a couple of the old guys that I was hanging with started getting crankety and stuff. And <laughs> here, one comes, of them, here comes that smoke. And here comes that smoke again. And, and one guy got up and just walked out and left and they were like, <laughs> never came back. He never came back. That was it. That so was funny. Uh, and uh, we have that video here, don't we? Yeah. Well, Which which tell one was about it? it? Well it's called Way Home Back. Here it is. Everybody's got something they could give every day Make a little bit better, help somebody find a way This old life keeps rolling, surely does every day Make a little bit better, help somebody find a way Gotta light the way on the way home back 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 Lord have mercy Everyone's got something to say Looking out to a better day We forget there's a price to pay You gotta give to give it away Say help me Say help me Oh my lord Oh, Santa Claus in the pouring rain Tries to lie but never vain Don't let the cow be put to shame Gotta serve if you want to sing Say send me Say send me Is watching, see what we will do. Everything that you turn around, gonna come right back to you. I've got this notion that we could do more. Take that old devil now, throw him down on the killing floor. We should be walking the miracle mile. Then one that we deny, we deny the Lord on high. Everybody's got something. about a second bird. Should be walking the miracle mile in the one that we deny, we deny the Lord on high. Gotta light the way on the way home back, light the way on the way home back, light the way on the way home back, light the way.
know somebody by the way This old life keeps rolling Surely comes every day Dig a little bit better Know somebody by the way Get a life the way on the way home back Jamie brings, I think, the youth to our band um, that we all love to keep and, and like to have. Um, he brings excitement and, and new ideas where a lot of times we might not think about him being a little older than him. Jamie Rowe is definitely the clown of Guardian. I say that not because of his lovely red hair, but because he has the ability to make us laugh and always keep things loose and having a good time. A lot of times we'll, we'll be tense after a 500 mile drive cramped in a van and he has a way of breaking the ice and stuff and uh, he's, uh, Jamie is genuinely a nice guy. He's probably one of the nicest guys I've ever known in that he's really got a giving spirit. He's too tall, his hair's too red, he's way too good of a singer for his own good. If I had to say one word I would probably say slob. <laughs> We got to do another uh, video from Swing Swanks One. Uh, we did a song called See You in Heaven. That was cool because uh, I wrote that song. It, it really meant a lot to me. Um, and, and to do it in video form was really cool. Um, it was actually a song about uh, my mother dying when I was young and just about dealing with all those feelings and those issues of, of growing up and, and not having that parent there and, and, and missing out on a lot of those things, you know, a lot of those joys. and just a lot of that experience with your parent you know, not being there and uh, it's been really a really useful tool a lot of people have seen the video uh, a lot of people that have seen us live in concert or um, actually listening to the song on record um, God has really used that because uh, the, we just keep running to people at shows more and more people that have lost a loved one a parent a friend uh, you know a grandparent and, and that type of thing and, and uh, man every show we get People, either people writing us notes or coming up to us personally and saying uh, that God has really used that song to minister to them. And uh, I, I think, I just feel fortunate that uh, we got to make a video for it. And this one's called See You in Heaven. Without you, cause living without you is the only thing that 
You know, is a great drummer and everything, but he's also my road roomie. So, which means basically, for the last five years, there's been about three fourths of the year we've lived together. So, we kind of know a little bit about each other. And uh, I can just say, you know, he's real. He's a real good friend. You know, I'm. All the guys in the band are, are just really good friends. It's not what you see on stage. Is not just the four of us. You know, like tolerating each other. We're all friends and everything. But I don't know. He's a just a good person all around and stuff. His nose doesn't work half the time on the road. I always ask him that question. Carl, does your nose work? Carl Ney is probably the mystery man of Guardian. He's probably the most quiet one of all of us. Uh, he's kind of the straight man, and we always tease him about that. But it's, you know, it's kind of funny. He sits back there behind the drum set, and he kind of sees it all. So Carl had, oh, could probably tell you more about any of us than the others could. I can't say one word. Patience. 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 That's a good one. Well, we were getting ready to, uh, you know, in our minds to make another record. Um, we would just gotten back from two crazy weeks from Australia, New Zealand, just dead tired. I think we had a, got in night that night, had to leave three o'clock the next day. Got on a bus with Steve Taylor, and what was really killer about that whole thing is, you know, they're all alternative band, and so they're, you know, and we split a bus. His whole his whole band and and Guardian all on the same bus, and. And they're thinking, oh man, this metal band's coming on. So they, you know, I don't they know. They expected us. There were leather prepared. spikes and chains. Yeah. Well, Steve would come out and watch us every single night. Uh, you know, thirty-five do, shows. Thirty-five yeah. shows. He watches us do, you know, just do our set, and he'd be sitting there in the sidelines and stuff. And and uh, we kept talking amongst ourselves. Okay, what kind of next? What's the next record we're going to make? What's it going to be like? You know, what are we going to do? And I, I asked Steve. I just said, you know, you you watch us for, uh, you know, a little while now. You, you hear us. You know, what do you think we should do on our next record? And uh, who do you think we should have produce it? We're thinking about this guy, this guy, and this guy. And Steve was like, that would be interesting. That, you know, that, that guy might work. And, you know, we're just kind of going through different things. And uh, so we ended up doing the whole tour with him. And we ended up doing some uh, dates over in Europe and Germany. So we asked him one night. We, we in did Germany. an English tour. Yeah, and then, yeah. yeah, England and then Germany. Yeah. And so one, one fateful night, I think it was the last, last show on, the last on tour. Nights. The light bulb yeah. went off. Hey, how about you, Steve? Yeah. And uh, um, it just seemed like a, nat a natural fit. And he goes, that, that might be interesting. The great thing is that Steve really saw us and knew us as a, a live band. And so when we went in to make this record, that's the whole, you know, that's the whole angle we approached it at. Um, at. It's a live band going in, just jamming out, that, jamming out a record. And to me, that's what buzz contains. Uh, more than any record that we've done so far, it really sounds like a live record. It sounds like us. Well, when we were making the Buzz videos, we uh, had an option to work with a few directors, and uh, one that was in all of our minds is not only did we feel Steve made a great record with us, but uh, I personally, myself, and I think these guys as well, we really think he's up the quality of Christian videos and just videos in general. I think he makes great videos, and uh, just it seemed natural since you know he was part of the music. He's he relates to it. He understands it. You know, we 
the camaraderie we, we had in the studio, let's just make, you know, translate it on film too. And He understands us, we understand him. That was what was fun about working in the studio. I mean, Steve co-wrote a lot of lyrics with us. He, uh, he let us be ourselves, but he pushed us in that, you know, Steve's a brilliant lyricist and he would go, okay guys, this is good, go back, it can be better. That was the, the best thing about working with Steve is that anyone who knows Steve's music, uh, it's definitely not dull, predictable music. You know what? When we were up on the grate in the uh, Lead the Way video, we were up about 18 feet high, and it was this grate with holes through it, and you could see down, and there's lights coming up. Is that all the higher it was? Yeah, it was pretty it was yeah, 18, I, I was still feet. sitting up, so it was 20 by the time I got there. And done. we had four searchlight beams underneath us that like would blind you if you looked down. Mm -hmm. Every time David would get a little excited, he'd start to bounce, and he found this perfect spot on the grate that would make my seat bounce <laughs> a little. And I just happened to be at the back, man. So I kept looking off the he back, going. He kept looking going, back, and then he Ooh, and then he, he, would, he would look over at me like, "Okay, Knock dude, it off, okay, man. dude, take it easy." <laughs> I mean, we had Cub Scouts in this video. In fact, oh, my son played a Cub Scout and uh, had a lot of fun doing it. We, it's just wacky stuff. So with that in mind, let's watch one of these new videos. Yeah, I'm this, tired of talking about yeah. it. Let's look. Let's prove. This it. is called <laughs> "Lead the Way." The world direct I gotta get rich Get rid of cost collect I got a psychic advice to say Get a life card I'm getting bad vibes Off of your deal meal card Tell me why their words ring hollow Lead the way and I will follow You can't lead me out of this place Show, show off, giving me gas I got a set in the straight as yellow Shove, shove, shove I got no one teaching me how to love, love The more I chew, the less I swallow Phil does best is put on ridiculous makeup and get really close to the camera and play an old know, man. Yeah, the extra <laughs> the extra nose hair and beard facial kind of stuff. But uh, that was makeup. Actually, we trimmed him up a little. That's bit. That's right. Straighten him out a bit. But uh, Phil Madeira played uh, the old man and this old man and and kind of symbolizes how he looks. He symbolizes what the song is about. Here we are in Ben Pearson's basement. Had a blast today, yeah. And there's Actually, definitely an I, old man in this. I this ordinarily old man. don't dress like this. I mean, I am a flamboyant dresser, but I'm really not quite. It's a good touch, Dave. Yeah, I like this it. This whack, but here Boots we are. and roses. That's it. <laughs> and this video is called "This Old Man."
I would just describe David Bach. I would say confident and stuff. He knows where he's going. He knows where he's been. Um, just real, real confident. In one word, David is is definitely the big picture. Big picture guy. If I had to sum myself up in one word, it would be mileage. If I had to sum up Tony in one word, it would be strong. Sum him up in a word, just talented. Mm. I kind of have the mother hen vibe sometimes in a kind of keep things going along that way. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think somebody has to do that, but uh, um, I, I love all the guys in the band, and, and I think that's kind of what has forced us together. So uh, to sum up in one word, I would say I'm a sincere mother hen. And if I had to sum up Jamie in one word, it would be funny. To sum Jamie Rowe up in one word, it's ridiculous. Fundamentalist. I would hope someone would describe me as happy. And you know, you can describe me as silly too, or goofy, or whatever, because I, I won't argue there. I always ask that question, Carl, does your nose work? Um, so I would say, to sum Carl Ney up in one word, plugged. Boy, if I had to sum up one word for Carl, it would be solid. I would say consistent. I know that sounds silly, but consistent because he's, he just, I can count on him. And the guys always say that I bring stability because I'm the most level guy in the whole band. Well, that might be true, so. I'll take that as a compliment. I don't have special three words for those guys, except I love them, man. I love them. Hey, people, it's Guardian again, this time with the whole clan. And we're here at the house of Carl Ney. I'd like to introduce my wife, Sandra. Hi, and this is our son, Hunter, who's four, and our daughter, Audrey, who is five months. Hard to remember sometimes. <laughs> uh, uh, my name's Tony, and uh, you probably know me, but you don't know my beautiful wife, Brenda. Hi. And we're going to introduce our clan. This is my son, Jacob, or our son, Jacob. He's six. This is Andrew. Raise your hand up, kids. Four. Raise them up. This is Amanda, and she's two. And this is the new one. This is Tessa, and she's a month old. Yay, Tessa! <laughs> I'm Jamie Rowe, of course. As you know from the rest of this video, I'm the guilty party here. But the most tolerant woman in the face of the earth is sitting next to me. She happens to be my wife. This is my wife, Heather. And this is our little boy. It's our first five months old. He's getting his belly full right now. This is little Christian Rose. Christian J. Ow! Officially known as Da Poots. <laughs> I'm David Bach. As you may or may not know, this is my lovely wife, Laura. That's right. Hi. Our oldest boy, the movie star himself, Joshua, who has been in a couple of our videos. And our youngest son, Tyler. Now you can. You can say hi, hi, hi. <laughs> and we have 
the latest edition, the 10th Guardian Child, is right here. And so expect it on Christmas Day. We have a commandment for each kid now. Wondering where you are, I can't believe how this child is grown. Living his life, sometimes so alone. Wishing I had one more chance. Hi, this is Guardian, and you're watching Power Source! Here's our brand new video. Get the thing! Ah, you're watching. Stay tuned for our video, Christian Pines TV. Hey everybody, we're Guardian, and, and you're, you're not. not! Hey everybody, we're Guardian, and, and you're, you're not. not! Oh, come on. Hey everybody, we're Guardian, and, and you're, you're not! not. Uh, Guardian! Yikes! Video! 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 Nightlight! Hi guys, we're Guardian. We're on the level, so watch street level video. It's <laughs> Hello friends, we are Guardian. Guardian. You're watching Night Songs with all of us in Guardian. Guardian. Here's our latest video. Hope it finds you well and friendly. Hey, this is Tony from Guardian! I hear you guys have been messing with me. Oh, say can you see? Our new video right here on Americana Television. What you see is what you get! Ow. There's lots of things in this world you can believe, man, but there's only one place you can really believe, and that's right here on Believe, and here's our latest video. So believe it. <laughs> 